Ignition is one of those games that I'm unashamedly in love with, while also being fully aware of its most basic flaw, but it's interesting to note that this flaw, both now and then, while disappointing, ultimately doesn't detract too much from the overall product. At the tail end of 1996, Ignition released to mixed reviews, though admittedly skewing closer to positive than negative, and it largely flew under the radar for me until one day my dad came home with two PC games. Both of them involved driving, and both of them had me hooked. The first, Big Red Racing, which we'll talk about perhaps some other time because it's, uh, weird. Put your foot down! <laughs> And the second, Ignition, a game that looked incredible on my poor graphics card lacking Hewlett Packard monstrosity. It immediately put me in mind of the endless days playing micro machines with friends thanks to the top down perspective. But Ignition was a very different beast. Firstly, this is a straight up top down arcade racing game. There's no real bells and whistles, and while it looks like it might have the piss off all your friends by nudging them off screen mechanics of micro machines, or even perhaps the piss off all your friends by throwing a shell at their ass mechanics of Mario Kart, this has none of that. You drive forward, you turn corners, you dodge obstacles, you win races. That's it. What truly works here, however, is that even 20 years later, the game has a slippery, skiddy, soap on the wheels style of gameplay, one that takes barely any time to get a feel for, but perhaps takes slightly longer to master as you learn the layouts of the tracks and the weight of your vehicle, leaning further into the pinball frenzy of the races themselves. Ignition is fast and bouncy and slippery. It's a rubber ball covered in grease bouncing around a cheetah factory. Corners can be taken with expert precision or they can be used as bowling lane style guardrails that bounce you back onto the path at a slight cost to acceleration. Nudging enemy cars from the rear will see them spinning off sideways as you edge past them. There's an aggression here that belies the cutesy visuals, and it makes racing through these levels feel like a constant fight, especially when you take the hazards and shortcuts into account as well. You are a terrible driver! Each level is filled with stuff to throw you off. Perhaps it's a tornado that spins you around, or a train that blocks your path should your timing line up, forcing you to take a longer route over and above. Boulders may land on your head, swapping your left and right controls in that classic way to make you feel like a stupid idiot who can't adapt to the most basic of trickery. There's chaos here, but it's environmental, only amplified by the batshit AI vehicles, which are quite happy to get stuck in and nudge you off course should they fancy being a dickhead. And that's the good thing. It doesn't feel like an awful lot of rubber banding goes on when it comes to the other drivers. You'll gleefully watch them make the same mistakes as you do, get spun out, crash into walls, feel sad about life, basically. It's great, and you'll always feel like you're just one badly taken corner away from dumping your race down the drain. And so these are all positives, right? This is all very glowing. There's split-screen multiplayer, a fun pursuit mode to play around with, and, uh, I mean, well, there's... If you, well, I guess, I guess that's sort of it. And this is where Ignition fell down, both in the past and now. There's a distinct lack of content. Championship mode is the staple way to play through the game, starting on the lowest difficulty and completing that, you'll unlock the next difficulty. You then play through all of the same tracks again, find a new track at the end of it, and on beating that, you unlock another difficulty, and so it goes, each time unlocking a new vehicle or a new track, until eventually there's just nothing left. And by this point you've played through the same championship mode over and over to unlock a sliver of extra content that ultimately doesn't add a great deal. That lack of progression didn't particularly bother me back in the 90s, even when the price was higher than it is now. Ignition was a game I played through over and over again, largely in single player because I played it so much. Whenever I played the split screen mode with a friend, I'd gotten the levels mapped out so well in my brain that they just didn't really stand a chance. And I wasn't about to let them win passively. I'm not Gandhi. Coming back to the game now, a game which often goes on sale for a handful of Britain monies on GOG and Steam, the same issue still stands, but the same positives still shine. Ignition is a game that you pick up, play for 15 to 30 minutes, and then put it back down. 
You don't gain anything, you don't push anything forward, but you do have fun. And perhaps that undiluted sense of simply playing a game for the sake of playing it is what we need every now and then. Race against yourself, get that fastest lap, or simply drive for the sake of driving. If you had the choice of a small amount of fun, or a large amount of boring, you're gonna choose the former every time.